Hello, Luke. Welcome to lesson 19. So today we're talking about powers and radicals. Oh, you gotta like that title. It sounds like a, we're studying a history lesson on the French Revolution or something. The powers and radicals. Yes. But in fact, we're actually going to apply that to something much more understandable in mathematics. So uh, let's talk about powers first. Um, so if we have a number and we want to multiply it by itself, maybe three times, this is one way that we could write that out. Three times three times three. Okay, maybe we'll even do it four times. All right, three times three times three times three. All right, now we could write this out and you'll find that uh, in future lessons there are many um, times where we would like to take a number or a variable and multiply it by itself a certain number of times. And if we were to write it out like this every single time, it would become very tedious um, and not to mention be difficult to constantly be double checking your work and making sure that you have the correct number of threes being multiplied by each other and so forth. So in mathematics, we've actually um, adapted a, a method of writing this that doesn't take as much space or thought. So if we have three times three times three times three, we're going to write that as three to the power of four. All right, we can read this in a couple different ways. Three to the power of four or three to the fourth power. All right, all that means is we're taking this number, which we call the base. Let's actually write that in there. So this number is called the base and we're raising it to this number, which we call the power. Or we might call it the exponent. All right, so we have the power uh, slash exponent, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, so three to the fourth. Again, all that means is three times three times three times three. So if we take Maybe this time we'll go with two. If we go two times two times two times two times two, we have here uh, five twos being multiplied by each other. We could write this as two to the fifth power. All right. And of course, both of these two, two times two times two times two and two to the fifth, they would both be equal to what? Well, let's see here. We've got 16, uh, 32, I believe. If we multiply all that out, all right, so they're equal to this number, 32. Two to the fifth and two multiplied by itself five times. Pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of glitches here, a couple of common mistakes that people make uh, when they're first learning about powers. And I wanna make sure that we hit those now. So let's just uh, take a couple examples. Let's say we have um, I'll change my color here. Let's, let's go with uh, a negative four raised to the second power, okay? Negative four raised to the second power. That's gonna be one problem. Let's also take a negative four raised to the second power. Very similar uh, in appearance, but there is a very important subtlety that's different between these two. Um, and then let's also take maybe a negative four to the second power, all right? So we have three different problems here that I wanna work on. Just take a moment and look at those and just, you know, knowing what we know now about powers, uh, exponents, uh, give it your best shot. What do you suppose negative four raised to the two would equal. All right, so hopefully you've, you've had some time now to kind of think about that. Negative four raised to the two. Well, you might think that, okay, that stands for negative four times a negative four, right? We're just repeating it. And a negative four times a negative four would be a positive 16, right? You might think, okay, this is a positive 16. Well, if that's what you're thinking, no, that is not right. All right, that is a mistake. And it's a very common 
mistake that people make. And the point that I want to really emphasize today, because I, I'm hoping I don't see any of these mistakes in your homework problems, is that negative 4 raised to the 2, the, the number, the base that's being raised to the power of 2 is not negative 4. It's actually just the 4. So this is kind of tricky. Normally, we try to keep the signs with the numbers, right? But exponents, they have a very limited reach. They can only reach the number directly below them, all right? They can't really reach to the sign. Think of it that way. They just can reach to whatever is directly below them. And in this case, it's a 4. So this actually stands for a 4 raised to the second power, which would be 16, right? 4 times 4 is 16. And then we have a negative sign. So we have the opposite of that, or you know, a negative 16. That's actually what we have here. A negative 4 raised to the second. That's equivalent to a 4 raised to the second. And then we take the negative of that. All right, that gives us the negative 16. Very, very important. I can't tell you how many people make this mistake. Um, it's very common, so don't be one of those people. Don't make that mistake. Remember, the exponent can only uh, influence the number directly below it, just the four, not the sign. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's go on to this next one here and take a peek at that. So if I have a negative four, uh, in parentheses uh, raised to the second. I remember what I just said, the, the two or the exponent, I'm sorry, can actually only influence what's below it. So the question is, what's below this two? Um, and the answer is the parentheses are what's directly below this two, right? It's this parentheses. So it's that parentheses that's being raised to the second power. But parentheses don't just come in halves, they come in sets. So when we refer to this parentheses, we have to include its opening parentheses, which is over here. We have to include the whole set. So in this case, what's being raised to the power of 2? Well, it's this set of parentheses, okay, because that's directly below the exponent. So here we are in fact saying that this is equal to a negative 4 being multiplied by itself twice. So this one is being equal to negative 4 times a negative 4. The one up here was a negative uh, 4 times a 4. Now hopefully you can see the difference there. So this was a negative and then the 4 was being multiplied by itself twice. So the 4, not the negative 4. So we had a negative just transposing this negative sign over to here, a negative sign, and then we had the 4 times the 4. Here we have what's in parentheses, which is the whole thing. It's the sign included. So that would be a negative 4 times a negative 4. This would result in an answer of 16, a positive 16, because we have a negative times a negative, all right? Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense to you. Now, let's try this next one here. And again, maybe just stop and think about it for a second and see if you can come up with the answer. What do you suppose this one is? Well, again, in this one, we can think of it as that uh, exponent is only influencing what's right below it, which is this this parenthesis here, but again, parentheses don't come in halves. You have to include the whole set. So we have this four that's being raised to the second power. So this negative sign, well, that's still there, but it's just all by itself. So we have that negative sign, and then we have a four being raised to the second power, which means it's being multi whoops, being multiplied by itself. So we have a 4 times a 4, which is a 16, and then this negative gets tacked on to that, so we have a negative 16 as our answer. Notice that's the same as this problem over here, uh, right? It's just written a little bit differently. Here I threw in a set of parentheses just to emphasize that it's only the 4 that's being raised to the second power. I didn't do that over here. But the answer is the same. We're In both cases, we're just taking that 4 and raising it to the second power. The only time that changes is when that negative sign is inside the parentheses, as we have here. Then that negative sign is also being, in a sense, you know, uh, multiplied by itself. 
in over here. So hopefully that uh, makes sense to you. If not, uh, take a couple of minutes and just maybe rewind, re-listen to that because that's so important uh, not to forget that. Remember what is being raised uh, to the exponent. All right. All right. Now let's see here. Um, let's just tackle some brief problems here just to make sure we've got this down pat before we move on to kind of the next concept. So let's say I've got a negative 3 raised to the 3, and I'm actually taking this one directly from the book. Um, make it easier for me, I guess. And we'll raise this one to the second plus a negative 2 raised to the 2. Okay, so looking at this, Again, what are we going to do? Well, we should be able to see, and we've got some, some, some parentheses in here, we've also got exponents. Um, so let's, let's, let's work our way through this. All right, so let's tackle these um, one at a time. So we have three different terms. Maybe that's the first thing to point out. We have a term here, we have a term here, and we have a term here, right? So we have those three different terms, they're all being added to each other. There's there's no multiplication other than the exponents going on here. So since it's all addition, we can technically do anything first. Um, you can decide where you'd want to start on this one because addition is commutative, meaning that uh, we can take anything and, and add it to something else first. There's no order here that we need to follow. Uh, other than perhaps you might argue the exponents need to be multiplied out before we can add these terms together. All right, so maybe that I should say. We do need to multiply these exponents out before we can add these, these terms up. They're not like terms the way they are right now. Uh, so let's take it one at a time. So we have this negative 3 raised to the 3 uh, third power. All right, uh, so what does that mean? Well, recall this 3 only affects what's directly below it. So this is only affecting this 3, not the negative sign. So I will, maybe just so that you can see this clearly, we're just going to write that negative sign down here and then translate what this 3 to the power of 3 means. It means a 3 times a 3 times a 3. And again, I don't want to belabor the point, but I just want to point it out again, we do not have negative signs next to these 3s. Uh, there is a negative sign up here, but we brought that down to here. And now we take that 3 and we triple it or we multiply it by itself three times, all right? All right, then we can continue. So now we have this negative sign. We can bring that down. Now we have a negative 3 being raised to the 2. Notice again the parentheses. That's what's being raised to the positive 2 power. So negative 3 to the positive 2, that would be equivalent to a negative 3 times a negative 3, correct? Hopefully you're following me there. I've then got a plus sign. And now I've got another set of parentheses that's being raised to the second power, right? So this again would be the, the sign included negative two times a negative two. It's being multiplied by itself twice, all right? So that's just kind of the long version of you know showing how to write this, this, this initial problem out, all right? Now let's start multiplying. So we've got a three times a three times a three. Well, that's a 27, but it's, the opposite of that, it's a negative 27. And then over here we have a negative 3 times a negative 3, which is going to be a positive 9, right? But then we have the opposite of a positive 9, or a negative positive 9, which is going to give us a negative 9, right? And then over here we have, in multiplication, we have a negative 2 times a negative 2. Well, negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4, so we have plus a positive 4, which we can write as plus just a 4, all right? So now it's just a matter of simplifying this. So we have a negative 27 and a negative 9, all right? So we're just, we have two negative numbers. The answer is going to be negative, and we're going to add those two numbers up. 27 and a negative 9 is negative 36. And then a negative 36, well, we'll just write that down. Negative 36 plus the 4. Well, now we need to um, come four out of the hole, so to speak. So we have a negative 36. We're 36 in the hole. We're going to come out four units. So that puts us at a negative 32. All right. So now our final answer then is a negative 32. 
So hopefully that makes sense. We'll try one more and then we're going to move on. So let's try, we'll go a different color here just for the fun of it. And we're going to have a negative 2 raised to the 2 minus a 4, negative a 3 raised to the 3, minus 2 times a negative 2 raised to the 2 minus another 2. Why not? Okay, so looking at this again, I'm going to kind of do it in the long version just so that you can see how this works. Or, you know what, let's let's try to shorten this up a little bit. We're going to try to do some of this in our head, all right, so um, that you can practice doing it that way. And maybe we'll just change color once again here. So this is our initial problem. So we have a negative 2 raised to the 2. So what is that? If you can do it in your head, what is it? Well, think about it. Don't make the mistake. The 2 is only being applied, or the power 2 is only being applied to this 2, not the sign. So it's going to be a positive 2 raised to 2, which is 4, and then tack a negative sign in front of it. So it's a negative 4, right? Now I've got here, in kind of this term here, kind of looking at that and simplifying it, I've got a negative 3 raised to the third power. Now here the negative is being raised because the 3 is being placed on the parentheses, okay? So negative 3 to the third. Well, negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. Positive 9 times a negative 3 is a negative 27. So we have, if I rewrite this, we have minus this 4, and then we're multiplying that. Notice, this is multiplication in here. So we have minus 4 uh, multiplied by a negative 27. Okay? And then over here, we can, we're going to continue. So... Um, I'm just going to kind of work my exponents first. So we're just going to bring this minus 2 straight down, okay? And now we recognize again that we have a negative 2 being raised to the second power. Another way to say this, by the way, is squared whenever it's raised to the second power. One way of saying that is squared. So you'll often hear that, negative 2 squared. It should remind you of your area problems. And it's uh, hopefully that some of that makes sense now. So it means squared uh, multiplied by itself. All right, two times. And just while I'm on it, if something is raised, um, if something is raised to the third power, that's called cubed. Okay, just a little more vocabulary there for you. So if it's raised to a second power, it's squared. If it's raised to a third power, we call it cubed. All right. So anyway, let's keep going here. Uh, distracted. So negative two raised to the second power. Well, negative two times a negative two is a positive four. I'm going to keep that in parentheses only because this is multiplication right here. And I want to remind myself that these two numbers still need to be multiplied by each other. And then I have this minus two. Okay. Now we can look through this and do our order of operations. We're going to do our multiplication first, and we should recognize that we have a multiplication problem right here. So we have our negative 4, and then we have a negative 4 right here being multiplied by a negative 27. Well, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So we can right away say our answer is going to be a positive, and then we have to multiply out 27 times 4. And if you can't do that in your head, just do it off on the side here. I think I did that right. So that's going to be plus 108, right? And now I've got this negative 2 being multiplied by a 4, which is going to give us a negative 8, right? And then, of course, we have the minus 2 at the end. And now, uh, simplifying all this, we have a negative 4 plus 108, which would be 104, right? 104 minus 108 is what? 96? Yeah, 96. And then 96 minus 2 is our 94. All right, so that is our answer for this, this, this problem here. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense to you. Uh, let's move on. Now we're going to kind of think backwards. Um, we're going to stop talking about powers and we're going to start talking about radicals. All right. 
And probably a more familiar term for radicals that you've heard before is square roots or just roots, okay? So when we talk about uh, radicals, We should think in our head roots, okay? So if I take the number three and I multiply it by itself, three equals nine. Well, this would mean that three squared is equal to nine. Now, what if I wanted to work it backwards, okay? Uh, get back from starting at this nine and get back to this first three, okay? I would ask myself, okay, well, what multiplied by itself twice would give me nine? <clears throat> All right, so think about that for a second. If I didn't, if I didn't know this, this was invisible, and I just asked you, so I have the number nine, what squared, <clears throat> excuse me, what squared would give me nine? So in other words, you know, what squared is going to equal nine? You'd have to try to figure that out. So you'd have to ask yourself, what times itself would give you 9? And of course, the answer is 3, right? So you might say that this question mark right here is actually a 3, okay? This 3 is what we call a root of 9, okay? It's a root of 9, okay? And in fact, it's what we'd call a square root of nine. Remember I told you that the two exponent can be uh, said squared. That's what it, you, that's how you could read it. Uh, it could be read as squared. So if I'm taking the square root of nine, maybe I'll even write that, the square root of nine, the answer would be three because three squared is equal to nine. All right. That is what the square root means square root, all right? So if I take the number, for example, 16, and I ask you, well, what's the square root of 16? Well, to ask that, or I should say if I wanted to write it so that you could read it, I would put the 16 under what's called a radical sign, all right? Or you may have recognized that from the past as a square root sign or a root sign. Okay, so this radical sign looks like this, and we just put it right over the 16. And that indicates to us that we're trying to decide what times itself is going to be 16. And so if we think about that, we think of, okay, well, 4 times 4 is 16. So the square root of 16 is actually 4. That would be our answer. Okay. Um, we have to kind of be careful with this, though. Uh, because let's think about that. That is true. This is actually a positive 4, and that is the square root of 16. How do I know? Well, if I wanted to check it, I could take the 4, I could square it, and lo and behold, I get 16, which is what we were looking for. So, four, positive 4 is definitely a square root of 16. But I could also state that a root, a square root of 16 is a negative 4. What if I take a negative 4, set it in parentheses so that I am squaring that negative, and raise it to the second power? All right, negative 4 squared. Is that not also 16? Because a negative times a negative is a positive? So if that is true, then another solution for this problem up here, the square root of 16, is also a negative 4. So you could say the answer is either a positive 4 or a negative 4. They're, they would both work. They would both, when they're squared, equal the 16. All right? So when we think about radicals, you might think, oh, there's actually two answers to all these problems. All right? But let's take it a step further. What if we have the radical of a negative number? What if we have the square root of a negative 4? Can we solve this one? Well, let's think about it. You might think, okay, what times itself is 4? And the answer to that might jump to you right away. It's, it's 2. 2 times 2 is 4. But I don't want just a 4. I want a negative 4. 
So the question is, what times itself will give me a negative 4? Well, 2 times 2 gives me 4. That doesn't work. All right. Then you might think, well, let's try a negative 2. A negative 2 times a negative 2. But look at that. Negative times a negative is a positive. So that also gives me 4. That doesn't work either. I'm looking for a negative 4. So the only way I could get a negative 4 out of this is if one of them were positive and the other one were negative, then I could say that's equal to a negative 4. But then we're not really squaring it because we're, we're not taking one number and multiplying it by itself. We're, we're not doing that here. We're multiplying it by its opposite, not by itself. So the answer to this problem for right now, until you get into Algebra 2, is going to be there is no answer. There is no answer to that. Okay? No answer. And in fact, in this book, they will not give you a uh, negative uh, number that they ask for the square root of, uh, like this one is. Um, except for in one case, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So for right now, though, when we have a square root of a negative number, there simply is no answer. Okay. But now what if I had the number, oh, um, let's say I have the number eight. Okay. And I don't want to find the square root of eight. Let's say I wanted to find the third root of eight. So whenever we see this radical sign, we think, okay, well, what times itself gives me what's under the radical 16, right? But what if I wanted to know what times itself times itself again is equal to 8, all right? So notice I have three question marks here. So I'm looking for it multiplied by itself three times, okay? Well, to, to uh, write that, we're actually still going to put it in a radical sign. The difference is, though, we're going to put a little 3 right next to it here, right? Kind of in the little hook area. So this little 3 represents how many times the number is going to be multiplied by itself to give me 8. Okay? If there is no number inside this radical sign, we are going to just assume that there is an invisible 2 in that radical. So both of these would have an invisible 2 that we're just not seeing right now. So if there isn't a number, we assume that it's 2. If we want something other than 2, then we have to put that number in the little hook next to the radical. All right. So this is read as what is the cubed root of 8? Remember, I said earlier, a 3 um, if I have, you know, uh, 2 to the third, this is called the cubed, whoops, the cubed uh, power of 2. Okay. Oh, it's annoying. All right. So um, if we're here, we would then say, what is the cubed root? Not the cubed power, but the cubed root of an 8. Okay. So if you've thought about that long enough, you, you might think, okay, well, I think I know what that is. It's, it's if I take a 2 times a 2 times a 2, that's 3. It's a 2 being multiplied by itself 3 times, and 2 times 2 is 4, and times that again by 2 is an 8. So I know the answer is 8, right? So, or, excuse me, I know the answer is 2. That's what I would use uh, to multiply by itself 3 times to give me the 8. All right. So the answer here is, in fact, 2. All right. Now, again, um, could we argue that there might be a negative answer here? Like we did over here for the squared. We said, well, there's a positive, but we could also say there's a negative answer to it. Well, in this case, there isn't a negative answer. Because if I were to try to put a negative 2 uh, multiplied by itself, three times, what would I end up with? I'd end up with negative two times a negative two is a positive four times a negative two is a negative eight, right? And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a positive eight. Um, so this, in this case, we only have one possible solution. It's the positive two, okay? That would be our, our answer. Now, what if we were to change this up a bit and say, okay, well, what's the cubed root 
of a negative 8. We're going to try a negative number. Now remember I just said for the squared that that would give us no answer. There is no answer in the squared root, okay, if we have a negative number in there. Well, if it's an odd number that's in the, in the root sign. So the 2 is an even number. 3 is an odd number. If it's an odd number, then we do have an answer for a negative square or negative root. All right, and the, the answer is what we've just shown up here. It's a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2. Well, didn't that give us the negative 8, which is what we're looking for here? So in this case, the answer is a negative 2. And in fact, that's the only answer. There isn't any positive number that we can multiply by itself three times to give us a negative 8. All right, so the thing to remember here is if the root is even, like these ones, uh, a 2, um, maybe even a 4. Uh, we could certainly do that as well. If I have, um, if I have the fourth root of 16, okay, the answer would be 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, I multiplied by itself 4 times, that's going to give me 16. Okay, so the answer is, in fact, 2. And there is not a negative answer here. I can't put, uh, no, excuse me, there is a negative answer here. I could put a negative in front of all these as well and go negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8 times a po negative 2 is a positive 16. So a negative 2 would also work in this case. All right, so again, if you have even numbers, that's the pattern that you need to see here. If you have even roots, then there will be a positive as well as a negative solution. If you have odd roots, such as uh, what we have here, a three, or if we wanted to do a five, let's do, just to make it easy, we'll keep it with a two. So the fifth root for the number 32. Okay, the fifth root for the number 32 is 2. 2 times itself 5 times will give us 32. All right, 5 is an odd number. So there is not a negative solution here. There is only the positive solution because it's an odd number. And that should make sense to you because if it's an odd number, and we try to insert a negative sign in there because it's the only way we're going to end up with a negative is if we have a negative in there. If we multiply something by itself an odd number of times and that something is negative, you're always going to end up with a negative answer. Always, right? Anything multiplied by itself an odd number of times, if it's negative, is going to be a negative answer. All right? And we don't want a negative answer. We want a positive answer here. So there's no way that a negative is going to work. If we have an even number, well now negatives, it doesn't matter because we have an even number of negatives then, which when you multiply them is going to turn them into a positive. Remember, if you have an even number of negatives and you're multiplying, the answer will always be positive. So here we're looking for positive. We, we have an even root. Well, then that means that either a negative or a positive answer will work because they'll both give us this this number under the radical sign all right so hopefully that makes sense but the moral of the story again just to recap is if it's an odd number we only have one possible answer and it's going to be a positive number if it's an even root we're going to have two solutions a positive solution and a negative solution all right and if we try, or like we did over here, if we try to take the even root of a negative number, we won't get an answer. It, it can't happen. All right? And they won't give you problems like this. They will give you problems um, like this, this guy here, uh, where they have a negative root or a negative uh, number under the root, uh, but it'll always have an odd number out here so that it can actually work. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to you. All right. Um, let's move on real quickly here. I want to talk about some variables next, applying what we've learned now to uh, variables. 
Uh, so if I have something that looks like this, y x squared m to the third, let's say. And, and let's say I'm going to have you, have you evaluate this. And I'm going to tell you that y is equal to a 2, um, x is equal to a 3, and m is equal to, ah, we'll just go a 1, make it simple. All right. So if we're evaluating this, we, we really don't do anything differently than what you've already done. So we're going to take that y and ask ourselves, what is it? It's a 2. We're going to set up a set of parentheses for that and plug in a 2. Then we have an x. Well, our x is a 3. We're going to set up a set of parentheses, plug in the 3. Now notice this 2, this power of 2, was over the x. So that x, which is the set of parentheses and the 3, means that the power has to go over the parentheses. Okay, so be careful again. Don't make the mistake and say that this is equal to 3 raised to the second power inside the parentheses. This is over the x. The x is the 3. We are putting that 3 in the parentheses. So the parentheses is what's being raised to the second power. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's going to be very important in a little bit here, as you'll see. So now we've got the m, which we've decided is a 1, set it in parentheses, and then raise it to the third power. Now it's just a simple matter of, of simplifying this. So we have a 2, or let's do our powers first, and I should probably say that we have multiplication between all of these, but you should always do your powers first. Always do your powers first, all right? So we're going to do that right now. We're going to leave this 2 alone. Its powers are already simplified. So now we have a 3 raised to the second power, which is a 3 times 3, which will give us the 9. And then we have a 1 to the third. That's easy. So we have just 1 times 1 times 1, which, of course, is just 1, right? So now we've simplified all our powers. We can multiply it out. 2 times 9 is 18 times 1 is 18, all right? So that is our solution. Now, let's try one that's just a little bit more complicated. So let's try pm squared minus z cubed if p is equal to a 1, m will be equal to a negative 4, and z is equal to a negative 2. All right. The difference here is we've placed some negative signs in here. So when we plug in, we have a P, which is a 1. So we will set up that set of parentheses. And then inside, we put our 1. And we have an M. Set up our parentheses. What is an M? It's a negative 4. And then we raise that to the 2. OK? And then we have our minus sign. We'll just bring that down. Then we have a Z. So we set up another set of parentheses. Our z is a negative 2, and then that's being raised to the third power, right? Now, note how I did that. We, we, this is why it was so important to use parentheses when we're evaluating. Um, otherwise, it would have been very easy to lose this negative sign. We would have thought negative z, which is a negative 2, and we might have just written a negative 2 underneath the z to the third. Or we might have even said, here's our z. It's a negative 2. We raise that to the 3. But notice this is not correct. We might have done something like this, a negative, negative 2 raised to the third. Uh, but this isn't right, because here, what's the 3 over? It's over the 2. So then only the 2 is being cubed. But the 2 is not what's being cubed. The z is what's being the cubed. And the z happens to be a negative 2. So it's the negative 2 that's being cubed, not just the 2. All right? So that's why it's so important to remember to set up your parentheses and then plug in the numbers inside the parentheses for each variable. All right? So now we can multiply it out. So we have, uh, let's get rid of our exponents. We have our 1. We'll leave that alone. We have a negative 4 squared which is going to be a positive 16. Then we have our minus sign. We have a negative 2 raised to the third, which is going to be a negative 8, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. 
And now we can uh, work this out. So we have 1 times 16. Well, that's easy. That's 16. And then we have a minus minus 8, which is going to be the equivalent of plus 8. 16 plus 8 is 24. That's our answer. Okay. Very good. So hopefully that uh, kind of makes sense to you. Um, and that's pretty much where we need to stop here. Uh, before we go, there's one final note that I want to throw at you, and then it has to do with radicals again. So I, I spent some time showing you how the square root of a 4 could have the answer of 2 or a negative 2. It could be either one, right? In this particular textbook, if they want this answer, if their goal is to get this answer out of you, what they will do is write a negative sign in front of the problem. All right, so a negative square root of 4 is going to be this answer, a negative 2. Just think of it in terms of you're keeping the positive answer for the square root of 4, which is 2, and then this negative gets tacked on there, and you get the negative 2. All right. If they want you to have the positive two as their an their ans your answer, then they will just write it as the square root of four, and you can respond with the solution of two. You can assume that they're looking for the positive solution because they didn't put a negative sign out here. That's just the way they're going to do it in this particular book. All right. But bear in mind. I don't forget though that. Um, you know, if I have just a 4, the square root of 4, technically there is another answer here, even if they're not looking for it. There is an answer of a negative 2. So in some books, they would write the answer to a square root of 4 as being plus or minus 2, which is kind of interesting. You have this double sign here, plus, minus, 2. And all that means is that this answer is either a plus 2 or a minus 2, whichever you prefer, because they both work. All right. But in this book, they're only going to want the positive answer unless they put this negative sign out in front. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and again, that's just for this particular textbook. So when you're working on your problems, you know which solution to give. All right. Very good, and I think we will stop there. That is about as far as we're going to go with this. And then uh, we will continue tomorrow with volume. Fun, fun. So I will see you tomorrow.